All right, we were we were talking. Oh, it's been a couple of weeks back because we've had other things, but we were talking about Jesus after his resurrection, and we were talking about the different ways he showed up from his resurrection to Pentecost. So I want to continue along this because I feel the Lord wants us to see him. And one of the things we look at, <clears throat> excuse me, we look at in these passages is their need, which is our need today, to recognize Jesus in new forms. Mm -hmm. To recognize the man they knew and followed was killed. His flesh was killed. But his soul and his spirit huh, put on that glorified body. And he's different. But he knows how to communicate himself. So it's something I want us to really pay attention to these days. Because God may show up in ways you didn't expect him. Anyway, you know, he's a wild man. Oh, I love that. He's just a wild man for yes. God. So good. And he said he was walking into this huge meeting, and I don't know how many years ago this was. He was walking into this huge meeting. He was so excited to be there because the front couple of rows were these big guys that he knew and that he loved to fellowship with, and they always feed off each other and talk with one another. And he was so excited. So he walked in from the back, and he's adding up there. And he saw this little man sitting on one towards the back by himself and looked a little disheveled wasn't all together and, and Bobby just recognized he was there and he just kept on walking towards his friends and <coughs> the Lord said go back and Bobby said well I really want to go talk to my friends <laughs> and the Lord said I said go back and so Bobby obeyed and he went back and when he sat down beside the man to have conversation with him the Lord unveiled himself. It was Jesus. <laughs> and he kept said, I got a lot better conversation with Jesus than I would have gotten with all those big guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we live in such an hour as that. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit direct your eyes and direct mm. your ears. Mm -hmm. Because they're irritable, short of it. I'm telling you, there's going to be this flow. There is this flow of the Holy Spirit like we've never seen before. And the Holy Ghost will show things to us that will be marvelous. Some of those things he'll ask you to pray about. Some of those things he just wants you to celebrate him with. Let's experience Jesus in the midst of all the pain and the darkness. That's what's going to keep us alive. That's what's going to keep us motivated. That's what's going to give us the power to go through the last days. Amen. Amen. So the last time we were looking at these things, the Lord had been at him, gone to Emmaus with the two disciples on the road. He had then disappeared. They had come back to Jerusalem. And when they came back, they walked into the room of the disciples. And there were just 10 there, of course because Judas was gone, but that night Thomas wasn't there. So there were only 10 disciples there and they were, they were talking and everything. But when the men came back from Emmaus, they walked in on that. And instead of being surprised by their conversation, the disciples said, yes, we know he's alive. He's alive because things had been going on in Jerusalem at the same time. Now here's an interesting thing. Dake's Bible says this. The Jews were good at believing the glory and the greatness of the kingdom that would make them great in the eyes of the Gentiles. They were big on that. But they didn't want to believe the prophecies of his humility, his suffering, and they crucified him because he didn't fulfill their hopes. <clears throat> he wasn't the king they wanted. You know how even his own disciples asked him about that. He wasn't the king they expected. Listen to the spirit now. He wasn't the king they expected, but he was the king. 
he didn't answer their ambitions. He didn't even sympathize them, with them or say that he would do anything about the Roman yoke that they were under, that they wanted God to break off of them. <clears throat> he didn't acknowledge any of that. So they didn't acknowledge him because he didn't match up to their images. I'm telling you, be careful. You're not religious. Amen. Let Jesus be Jesus because he's never going to be anything else. Our difficulty is we have to peel back things we've been taught and be sure we go back to the word of God for ourselves and know what the Holy Spirit is bearing witness to us about because he will. God's word is truth and the spirit of the Lord is faithful to give us truth if that's what we really want. Mm -hmm. And we live in an hour when that is what we must pursue. It is so important we know the word of God and believe the full counsel of the word. For years, there have been different people, leaders, that have taught only the New Testament matters. That's a lie. The yeah. Old Testament and the New Testament matter, or God would not have put them together. You've got to take the whole counsel of the Lord. And how many times, as, as women of prayer, how many times has God spoken to you out of the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. How much wisdom has he given to us out of those pages, and especially out of Proverbs? Amen. You want to lay aside the book of Psalms and not know all that stuff David walked through and then rose up victorious? Uh-uh. It'll, it'll help you. It'll strengthen you. You need the whole counsel of God from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that. And ask God where you ought to be reading. I always ask the Lord. In fact, I'm coming up on the end of an area right now. I just finished reading through the Gospels again, and the Lord just spoke to me even this very morning, and he said, go on through the book of Acts. So ask the Holy Spirit where he wants you to be reading. Don't just be doing something because it's a ritual. Ask Holy Spirit because God, even in our daily reading, God will amaze you how it matches up to your life. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the Bible so alive. I love it. All right, Holy Spirit will show us what is right, and God is always right. <laughs> so all the disciples are there, and they're sharing together, the ten of them. And while they're just talking with these two guys that have just came back from Emmaus, Jesus walks in. And, you know, I just say, come on, Lord. <laughs> just walk in. Luke 24, verses 36 through 49. Now, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself took his stand among them and said to them, Peace, freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin be to you. Ha, huh, look at that. Freedom from all the distress that is experienced because of sin. We need that phrase today. 24, 36. Lord, free me from all the distress that sin is creating right now. Free me from it. Put my eyes on you. But they were so startled. And they were terrified. Because they thought he was just a spirit. They didn't think he was there in the flesh. They thought he was just a spirit. They just thought he was a ghost. And he said to them, why are you so disturbed and troubled? Why do such doubts and questioning arise in your heart? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. This is me. This is I, myself. So feel me. Handle me. See, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Flesh and bones. So this glorified body we're going to get is going to be flesh and bones but without the problems of the flesh, hallelujah. It's gonna be flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he'd said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. He wants them to know, you can touch me. And I want you to know today, beloved, you can touch him. I remember one day I was desperate, just so desperate for God. I had my own church building and 
I was in the church by myself and I was down in the altar. I was flat on on the face, right in the altar facing the pulpit. And I was just praying as hard as I could pray. Nose in the floor. And I was praying so hard, all of a sudden, I felt a huge hand resting on my back. And it was such a, a heavy hand. You know, this is what you do. You're praying in the spirit, but you let your mind think. And in my mind, I said, Lord, he said, it's me. And so then you're just do communicating directly with God himself. I needed answers. I was desperate for answers. And he gave me answers that day, but he came. I'm telling you, we're living in days when Jesus himself will come to you. The angels are gonna come, and I'm asking for more and more understanding of how they operate, how they work, uh, their, their position in doing these things. I'm asking them because many more have been released to help us in this hour. And we need their help or God wouldn't send them. So, and know you have your own that are helping you as well. In fact, I think our angels have increased mm -hmm. of who is taking care of us right now. Now, while and since they still could not, they still could not believe, but it says, this is, this is neat. And while since they still could not believe it for sheer joy, this is really him, he's not gone. Can you imagine a few days before they had stood at the foot of the cross and watched him die? He's alive. I mean, it just you can just imagine that burst of energy that came out of those men. You can just imagine as fear breaks away from them and this burst of, yes! <laughs> We're gonna say that one day. Yeah. We're gonna say it. And he said, to them, have you anything to eat? Because he's still proving to them who he is. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and he ate it right in front of them so they could see he it does have a body. It's not just human anymore, but he does have a body that actually functions and he actually was hungry. <laughs> and he said to them, this is what I told you. He's reminding them. While I was still with you, everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So there's another reason you can't cast away the Old Testament. Jesus is the fulfillment. Well, we would understand what he fulfilled. And that's why we need to study it. But he said, everything written about me the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms will be fulfilled. And then I like the next phrase, verse 45. Then he thoroughly, say that, thoroughly, thoroughly. opened up their minds. Oh, thoroughly opened my mind. There goes any gray area. There goes any fog. There goes the last dregs of, of the morning that they had been in the grieving process they had been in, and God removes all that. You ever been in a situation where God so, so, just suddenly just clears your thinking mm -hmm. and the oppression is gone? That's what he did for them mm -hmm. right here. He thoroughly opened up their minds. That's a good prayer to pray. And what did he open their minds to? Understand the scriptures. He opened their minds so that he could, they could now remember what he had said, remember what they had been taught as they were growing up in the temple, <clears throat> because they went to class, <clears throat> excuse me, they went to class and they learned these scriptures, and now he's opening up their mind so that they become alive to them. That's awesome. That's what the Holy Ghost does for us. And said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead and that repentance with a view to and as a condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. That's why there is the phrase out of Jerusalem to the nations. 
I was so thankful when I got to go there. And I, and I know even Dr. Fletcher had prophesied over me. And he said, once you have stood in Jerusalem, once you have stood in Israel, out of Israel will come all God wants to do out of your life. Wow. And I have seen that happen. <clears throat> out of Israel, out of Israel, the goodness of God comes to us. All right. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I will send forth upon you what my Father has promised. Now here comes the promise. Being, it's about to be fulfilled. Remain in the city of Jerusalem until <clears throat> you are clothed with power from on high. I want you to picture this. He's talking to them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now when we read about Pentecost, it's the fact that the wind came and the fire came over each of them. That was the presence of the Lord, presence of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit. But he's saying, you will be clothed. And I want you to picture this for your own life. You have been filled and clothed. Do you think anything can touch you? I don't think so. You've been clothed. God has wrapped you in the Holy Ghost. The first time I ever saw that in the Old Testament was Judges. Chapter 6, verse 34. Judges 6, 34. And that's when God was raising up Gideon. And Gideon had obeyed the first things God had said to him. Tear down the false altars of your father. He offered a sacrifice to God on the new, on the new altar. And then it says in verse 34, God clothed Gideon with the Holy Ghost. That's Old Testament. The only way Gideon could become the leader to rescue Israel was for the Holy Ghost to come upon him. We have a double portion. He is within and without. Glory. Amen. There is a glory in there somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So you've absorbed him and he wraps you. There is nothing God will not reveal to you and give you the ability to walk through and do for his glory. Holy Ghost people. Hmm. I'm going to pray. Father, what you have given to us, the blood of your son, the crucified one, the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamos of God, the Creator. There is nothing we cannot do that you call us to do. And I ask you, Lord, that as we go to our private prayer closets, there would be a new clothing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. A new wrapping in your power to cause us to be more effective for you than we have ever been. Amen. And we say thank you. Thank you, thank you for the connection yes. between heaven and earth. Yes. Between heaven and earth. Yes. And Lord, we welcome you to take our lives and use them for your glory. For whatever the fullness of the work of the cross, the gathering of your bride, Clothe us with the brilliance of God and take us forward to do our mission for your name's sake. Amen. 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 Amen.